And now I look a fright. My hair's sticking up and I'd have to put my hat on to flatten it down. I washed it recently. So it tends to stick up when I do. Let's see if she beats me on this time. I'm just texting my daughter, Brooke, to let her know I'm. You beat me. I didn't even get to the message. Ha! You beat me. <laughs> but thank you for beating me, I guess, because at least you, you made me giggle. So that's appreciated. Sorry for this being so high. But I'm putting it over on this side today because at least hopefully you won't get the glare from the Happy Yule. Hopefully you won't get the glare from the, the window. Let me get my hat on. My hair is a freaking mess. Whoops. Well, um, I uh, got to um, uh, experience a live uh, yesterday on um, magical crafting and at least found out the first name of the witch there. Love her dearly. Seems like a real sweetheart. Um, she really cares about, you know, her other witches that come on and spend that time with her. And some of the witches talk to me. So that was nice. Nice um, pre-Yule gift, you know, the day before Yule. And uh, one of them's in New York. And her name, <laughs> the name she goes by on the channel when she was on there, I just call her Inca. <laughs> it's a really cute name. It's called uh, Inca Binka something doodle or something. It's really cute. And... So I would call her Inca, you know, for short. She didn't seem to mind it. And I could barely see her picture, you know, because the pictures are like real, real super tiny. Um, uh, Amy is the name of the witch on uh, Magical Crafting. And she um, she did some um, some ornament. No, sorry, coasters. She, she took some, uh, it was a good idea. She took some flat um, wooden round some of them were round some of them were big some were smaller some of them were stars big and small i think and she meant to do ornaments but ended up doing a set of coasters which was a total of three three coasters excuse me because she freehand painted some stuff on there yeah yeah she's doing a um a fan meetup thing i guess um January 30th, um, somewhere, I forget, you know, you can go on the links and stuff on the bottom of her channel and, and it tells you where it's at and everything, but she, I, I made a comment, you know, I wish I could go and, you know, there were some other witches on there that said, hun, you know, we're right there with you. We wish we could go and, um, you know, but money being tight. You know, for a lot of people, you know, the, the traveling is just not possible. And Amy, apparently, she actually talked to me because I came in late on the live stream. And I don't even know how long I was watching her until I started talking to people. I started typing and saying, hello, everybody, you know, happy Yule and all that. And that's when Inca started talking to me. There was a couple of others on there that started talking to me. So I tried to respond back, you know, as best as I can. And I would send them like flowers and, you know, nature little symbols and stuff. And um, 
I didn't know that Amy was talking to me until I watched the live and it got to a certain point. And she said, Janet, hello. And I went, I went like this, like, oh my God, she said my name. Cool. So she acknowledged me, you know, and that meant a lot. And, um, you know, that's what we love about her though. She does try to acknowledge, you know, people when they come on, but you know, the chat goes by apparently so fast that it's hard to keep up, especially when you're trying to focus on, you know, doing something, doing a little craft or whatever you was doing. And she was drinking a latte with Bailey's Irish cream in it. She was drinking a cocktail. And then towards the very end, when there was like maybe that much of the live stream left, she did, uh, she poured, opened a bottle of red wine and, uh, and poured herself a glass and drank a couple drinks of that. And she gave me the idea for Etsy, um, you know, to sell some of my products, you know, some of my, um, my resin pieces and stuff like that. And that would be great, you know, and I appreciate that she she did that. That, that really meant a lot because um, she said you can do a listing on there for like 20 cents, I guess, uh, until like you get well-known or established enough. And then, you know, it, it, that that may go up or whatever. But then she was talking about, you know, you need to have uh, a domain name, which is true, that somebody else don't have already. Um, you got to have a banner. You got to make it look professional because if you don't, people are going to be like, ah, oh, you know, this person's a joke. I'm, I'm not doing this. Um, I'm not going to buy their stuff or whatever. So you got to make it professional. And I totally get that. I do. And I would want to make it professional. Otherwise it, it just wouldn't feel right to do it, you know? And the only problem is the investment as small as it may be. To even get something like that started, I can't do it because one, I, I, I probably couldn't afford it. Two, I couldn't run the risk of SSI finding out about it. And especially if I started making money with it, they're going to yank it out of my check. And then if I made past a certain point, they would take all of my check. And then I'd really be in trouble because then I wouldn't have any money at all to live on. And I can't completely rely on selling my stuff you know, enough to, to be able to make that money that I would suddenly lose from losing my check. So sadly, I can't do any of it because I can't run the rest of SSI finding out. Um, Inca, bless her, she, she said, well, if you're ever in the NYC area, she said, I'd love to do a, a you know, like a witchy kind of gathering thing. And she said, we would have fun. And I said, I know we would, hon. And I said, thanks for the offer. I greatly appreciate it. But I can't I can't afford to travel. You know, I, I don't have the money to travel. And, but it's still, it meant a lot that she, that she offered. You know, and I mean, she didn't know me. She had just met me that, you know, from the live. Kind of, you know, you're not really meeting the person per se. You know, you're talking to them and everything. But it's kind of a meet. And uh, we were talking about... Um, how you can, uh, you know, how we would fast forward th through the live to see a finished product and then go back and watch the, the video from the beginning. And she said, thanks for cheating with me. So we had kind of a cute little banter going on there. And she said, actually, it's not cheating really. Cause no, it's not. I mean, there's, there's no hard, fast rule saying you can't fast forward to the, you know, to see what it looks like and then go back and watch it from the beginning. So you can see step-by-step step how she does it. Like uh, Amy did a, um, and when I say Amy, now I'm talking about the witch on magical crafting. She, she did a, a shrine to Bast one time and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was really beautiful. And she used a little like wooden cigar box to do it. The box was made of wood and stuff and she painted it up beautifully and she got, you know, put some stuff in there that was, um, uh, um, what word am I looking for? That symbolized bast, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. You see what I mean? She does stuff like that. Um, so she really does a lot of these fun projects and, you know, it is fun to watch and everything. And I'm, I'm glad that she's doing the kit thing. So she'll be able to, uh, I, I don't know how soon that is though. She's apparently going to be selling some kits, but she said they're going to vary. Uh, what kind of kits they're going to be and they're going to be crafting kits meaning we can you can do the if you buy the kit and it gets to you quick enough you can do it along with her on the live 
So while she's doing it on the live, you can literally be doing it at home right along with her. And I thought, well, that's cool, you know, but I don't know that I'll, I'll be able to do that. But it doesn't mean I won't still be at the live. You, you know, I will be. Um, but, you know, Inca, she even said, hey, she said, see you later, Janet. You know, see you next time. And, you know, blessed be and stuff like that. And I said the same back and. You know, it was a lot of fun, you know, the, the short time that uh, I was on there. Because, like I said, I, I caught it pretty late. Um, I was looking at some other stuff or something, I think it was, before I even clicked on that. And, you know, realized, oh, my gosh, it's alive. And saw the chat window going. I'm like, oh, wow, whoops, uh, oopsie. But, um, uh, so, you know, I try to do, I, I wish I had some fun projects to do on here today. But the funnest project that I would have to do would be do some more of my resin pieces, which I really don't want to do because I don't have the room to store them. And I don't have the table right now to to do them on because I'm doing my diamond paintings and, you know, that's taking up the table. So, you know, I because I don't, I mean, it's Yule. I, I want it to be special in some way. I don't, you know, I don't want it to, to be boring. Certainly I try to make it eventful and, and fun and, you know, kind of put my own little fling on it. But as you can see, you know, over here in the background, the cluster flub behind me, um, that, you know, it bothers me every time I see it. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my best and I will be doing, you know, a Yule ritual and stuff at some point during the live, but I mean, I just woke up like about 35 minutes or so ago because it was nine, like five to nine or something like that. I think when I looked at the clock before I um, started the live and everything. Um, and yesterday, um, I don't know if you was able to catch it, but I did a, a quick little live stream. Sorry. Um, it was only like eight, eight or nine, some odd minutes long. It, I'll warn you ahead of time. It's a sad one. And so you don't even have to necessarily worry about watching it unless you really want to. Um, it mom, she, me and Carl, um, came up with this idea. Uh, the other day we were talking on the phone and, uh, I think it was a good idea. He feels it was a good idea. And I even talked to Jim about it. And Jim seemed to think that, oh, mom would love that, you know. And when I talked to mom about it, though, she would rather have complete strangers in her home to do this stuff for her because they wouldn't charge her anything than give her struggling daughter $20 a week to do the same exact things that these other people claim they would do for her. She didn't know these women. She lived, uh, they lived next door to her over at the old place and they were Mexican. It was a mother and daughter and I'm not being racist or anything like that at all. You know me, I'm not like that, but she didn't know them. She, but yet she would rather have them clean her house because they offered to do it for nothing. than give me 20 lousy dollars a week to do it for her to give her some company, to, um, you know, fix her some good meals so she's eating better. Um, and and she just, the way she made it sound and, and everything, she would rather have complete strangers do it than her own daughter that's struggling right now. You know, and it's not like I'm asking her for $100. It's not like I'm asking her for $1,000 or, you know, $20 an hour to do it or anything like that. $20 a week was all I was asking. And... She, in a roundabout way, basically said, you know, no, I, I don't, I don't want to do it. And she really hurt me um, to the point that I called my brother and I, I was crying during the phone call. And uh, I, I cried off and on throughout the day, you know, that she cares so much more about her precious money, which she's setting on several thousand dollars right now, uh, that she's doing absolutely nothing with. Because it gives her security because she has that money, but she does nothing with it. The only way that she truly likes to spend any of it on herself. And she, you know, like when I would go get her money for her every month, she never gave me anything for that. 
And in my opinion, she should give me at least $20 a month for doing that just on principle alone because I'm taking my time using my gas and my car. I'm standing in the line, which kills my back to do so because sometimes those lines are really long. So I could be standing there for 30 minutes or longer. And, you know, she doesn't acknowledge any of that. She doesn't care about any of that. All she cares about is getting her money so she can stash it away. Now, she lets these women in her house. How does she know they're not going to rob her blind? What guarantee does she have that even if she got them to fix her a meal or something, they're not going to poison her? And then I'm going to get a phone call saying my mom's dead because she would rather have complete strangers do what I offer to do for her. And all I'm asking is $20 a week and consider how much I've done for her throughout life and how many times when she wasn't there for me, you know, when I was a kid, she was off drinking at a bar in the middle of the night and I would wake up, look in my mom's bedroom and she wasn't there. What if something happened to me while she was off drinking at the bar, you know? And I never brought any of that up. I never said anything like that to her, you know, because I wasn't on a path of vengeance and trying to hurt her. But yet she turns around and hurts me like this. And she really hurt me. She cut me deep when she did this. I called Carl and told him and he's like, oh, my God, no, she didn't. I said, yeah, she did. And he's like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And I said, you're not the only one, you know, and. He's like, Janet, I'm so sorry. He said, you know what? He said, I'm, I'm to the point. He doesn't even want to get her anything for Christmas because she's done this to me. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I love my mother. Of course I do, even though she's hurt me like this. But it's hurt me so bad that I don't even want to call her mom anymore. I, 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 I'm to the point that I would rather call her by her first name and, and not even call her mom because... She's not being a mom. She's being an, a, a grumpy old lady, and she just wants to sit on all that money because it makes her feel secure, and it makes her feel good about herself. She goes out and buys it, buys a bunch of really nice stuff. She's pulling a Naomi. She really is. She goes out and buys a bunch of nice stuff for herself, and she never wears any of it. But it makes her happy because she has it. And... So that was basically what, you know, what the, the little, the short little clip thing was about. And, uh, I couldn't even stay on, I couldn't even stay on and do, do any more than what I did because for that clip, because I was that badly hurt and still am. And now it's Yule and I'm trying to be, you know, put on the brave face. Like I was talking and I, you know, that's why I also put in the description, I said, bear with me. There may still be some sadness and tears. I will try to not go there, but I'm hurting. And, you know, I, I feel like I have every right to be, be because of what my mom, my own mother did to me when, you know, there was, there was no, no reason for her to do this to me and to choose complete strangers over her own daughter with no guarantee that those strangers are, are going to, going to do right. And, you know, she doesn't even have any way to get to them because they're over there at the old place still <sighs> next door. And Jim won't take her over there. I certainly won't take her over there. Um, why should I? So anyway, um, trying to change tactics here. And because it's Yule, let's see what the spell of the day and everything is. Don't know that I'll do it, but it's still nice to see what the spell is. Huh. Well then, mistletoe spell for luck. Now, I do have some fake mistletoe hanging above my altar over there. And I have some real mistletoe in the bedroom that mom actually gave me one time. I've never taken it out of the package because it's so old. If you take it out of the package, it'd probably just crumble to dust. With a consecrated ritual dagger, ceremonially cut a piece of mistletoe at sunrise on winter solstice. Solstice. As you do this, recite thrice the following incantation. So, you know, I can't do this anyway because sunrise is already done. Golden bow and witch's broom, thy sacred names are spoken. 
by dagger's blade i conjure thee to see all bad luck broken now wouldn't that have been a nice one to do um harming none this spell is done by law of three so mote it be hang the white berry plant over the front door of your house to bring good luck to all who dwell within mistletoe which was sacred to the druids and used in their ancient fertility rites is also said to possess the powers of healing and protection against evil, fire, illness, and bad luck. So that would definitely be a good one to do. Um, I mean, I suppose I could still do it, and it, it would still work, but the fact that I didn't do it at sunrise, I don't know if that would like cut back on the potency at all or anything of, of, the, of the spell. Oops, my pillow's attacking me again here. And let's see who the goddess is today. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This just made my day. I swear I did not know she was in here. Okay, get this. The goddess of the day is... Amalthea, um, Capricorn begins various locations. So the, the Capricorn goddess of love, this, she's the goddess today. Theme, success, humor, reason, devotion, providence, symbols, goat, cornucopia, and stars. About Amalthea. In Greek mythology, this she-goat goddess, I didn't know there was a she-goat goddess, but because um, there's a goddess of love that's... Um, pretty much she, to me she's it's one and the same uh nourished zeus as an infant in later years zeus broke off one of her horns which became the cornucopia providing sustenance for all earth's creatures for her diligence and service amalthea oh i know i called her Almathea, but anyway it's probably the same one was transformed into the constellation capricorn where she remains to do today this astrological sign begins on the first day of winter with the power of logic and reason. I didn't know that. To guide action balanced by a keen sense of humor when the going gets tough. Those born under this sign strive tenaciously for success like the stubborn goat they are. To improve your personal tenac tenacity, make a paper horn filled with fruit from now until the end of the year. Eat a piece of fruit each day named after the area of your life in which you need Amalthea's diligence. Take that energy with you each day so that by the end of the year you will achieve success. Other ways of emphasizing Amalthea's power include keeping the image of a goat perhaps cut out of a magazine or one made of stone on your altar or in another place of honor today. Carrying fortitude, inspiring herbs like ginger root and carnation are tucking or tucking in your pocket for the day. Stones that inspire victory like marble. Wow. Because I have a, I have a, a, a love, a love, love spell book that the Capricorn goddess of love is a month. Um, I call her a. Almathea or something like that. So like I said, with the way this sounds, it sounds like it's the same goddess. Um, but they don't associate her with the goddess of love in this particular thing. But to me, she is. She's literally the Capricorn goddess of love. But in, in that, in my love spell book, she's Almathea. And um, it's... <laughs> That was, I did not expect that, but you know, and no, I, sadly, I don't, I don't have any way to make the cornucopia and put fruit in it or anything. Um, but it would be a fun project, you know, if, if anybody else can do it, you know, I mean, you don't have to be a Capricorn to do the spell or to call on the goddess. I'm sure she could still help. Did you want to say something to our daughter? Cause I was in the middle of reading, reading out of the book. So um, cause he was like standing right there when I was reading out of the book. So I didn't know if he was wanting to say something or not. 
And she says, hi, Pops. Uh, oh, excuse me. So, Amalthea. That's Amalthea. You know, and funny enough, in the, in the movie, The Last Unicorn, when he turns her into a human, that's what he calls her, the Lady Amalthea. What the hell is that noise? Somebody out there pounding on something? It either sounds like someone pounding on something or gunshots. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's and it's Yule, and we're hearing gunshots out the window. Somebody or pounding on something. Somebody pounding on something. Okay, well, good. At least it's not gunshots, right? Um, he said hi. I don't know how well you saw him because you know I had to tilt this so forward, so I'm not like you're not seeing like the top of my head because I've got it sitting up on my my little um, Arctic Air Tower here. Yeah, it's, I would rather it be somebody pounding on something than, you know, gunshots. I mean, it's Yule, for goodness sake. So I didn't know. I, I, I can't believe it never dawned on me that today, um, being the winter solstice and everything, would be considered a day for Capricorns because um, the way I go by is December 22nd, not 21st. December 22nd to January 19th is considered Capricorn. So if you have a birthday between that time frame, you know, the 22nd to the 19th of January, you're a Capricorn. So finding out today, Yule uh, is considered Capricorn related. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you saw my reaction. I mean, at least it gave me some happy, you know, at least it made, it's like, I did not know that. Um, Hang on a minute, a few minutes, hon. I got to go make me some breakfast because if I don't, I'm, <laughs> I'll sit here for who knows how long before I even eat. And I've definitely got to get some breakfast, Cindy. What are they doing? Dropping somebody in the litter box again? Oh, they were, weren't they? Just that shit. That's interesting. <clears throat> I did not know that today was associated with Capricorns. I'm like, what? I'm like, okay. I keep my cards, my um, two decks in here. This is the original box that my makeup came in when I got it from Timu. I did, uh, with Maria's help, finally I was able to get some uh, eyelash, false eyelash um, glue, a little tube of it, because I got all these false eyelashes. It's like, you know, I might try my hand at them just in, in case, uh, instead of putting on mascara, just put on a set of false, false eyelashes, because 
like the whole idea behind mascara is to make your uh, original eyelashes stand out, right? So you put on false eyelashes, it does the same thing. So it would save me a step as far as makeup. She got me a thing of mascara too, which I greatly appreciate. Okay. Let's see what our Yule affirmation is today. Squeaky butt! What is Brooke's affirmation today? Personal growth. First time that card's been pulled. So repeat after me. As I move toward greater consciousness, I feel old thoughts and habits fall away. Like training wheels on a bike, they helped me get to where I am. But now that I can ride, I don't need those slow and crummy wheels, except when I'm making bike analogies. And it's a, it's a froggy on a on a, one of the big bike tall bike thingies. So that's your affirmation for today. And they, and they say it, it works better if you speak it out loud. That's why I say, you know, repeat after me so you can <laughs> benefit from it, you know, the, the best. What is my affirmation today? Strength. Oh, I haven't gotten that one before. I always love it when I get a new affirmation. Not that, you know, getting the same one multiple times is bad or anything. It's just, it's nice when you get a new one. It's like, oh, okay. You are hereby declared a strong, resilient warrior of heroic proportions. Enjoy your battles, whatever they are, because you're guaranteed to come through them stronger brighter and more compassionate and based on what I know of mythology, probably with great hair and a six pack. <laughs> Don't I wish six pack abs, you know? Yeah. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants six pack abs, you know, have that, that, that nice body and everything that I've been struggling to get all, back all my life. I got my breakfast pot pie cooking in there. And it takes five minutes. Oh, it just went beep, so I'll get it here in a minute because I want to read these two cards first. Okay, what does the Green Oracle have for Brooke today? Small things. I don't know if you've ever gotten that card before. I can't remember, but this is your card today with this one. Number four. Small green gestures, a boy picking up a cigarette, a girl throwing some trash into a bin, and a panel showing the different energetic efficiencies. Sometimes ecology and nature are not just about big and great stuff. They can be about terribly practical things that may seem so naive in their own simplicity. Still, what we call green gestures may make a difference, a difference in the world, maybe, but first and foremost, a different without ourselves, because as soon as we make the effort to do one of those gestures, we will have put something in motion. We are telling ourselves that we are not powerless against the world and that we are here doing something for the world. 
divinational meaning. Every journey begins with a single humble step. Great and overwhelming things can be broken down into many approachable small things. Doing little is better than doing nothing. Embrace action and motion and let things come. It's not necessary to make the difference in order to make a difference. So we'll see what mine is. Good for you. I'm not going to shuffle them this time. I'm all just, hi, baby. I knew he'd be over here. So here's your boo, baby. Here's your boo fix today. Um, hello. What does the green oracle have for me today? Okay. Heat. Yeah, I could definitely use some warmth because, you know, it's freaking cold outside. Um, number 16. The girl's sitting in a field of sunflowers. Hi, baby. Boo, baby. Fire. A girl sitting under the scorching sun with a lizard on her shoulder. Did you see the lizard? I might have not kept it up there long enough. See the lizard? On her shoulder there, climbing up her sleeve. Heat is the warmth of the sun on the skin. It is something that chases away the ghosts and the shadows of the mind. Under the sun, we can enter the nothingness of the perfect present, just feeling and being, without any need to think, do, or plan. Under the sun, sometimes it is possible to feel how strongly we belong to nature. Light and heat are invisible, but they are quintessential parts of the cycle of life. Divination. Close your eyes and feel the warmth on your face. Let go of action, but recharge your energy as everything else in nature does. The sun makes bad things melt away and disappear. Even in the brightest light, other senses can be very important. So that's those. And I'm going to go get my hot pie, so I'll be right back. Meanwhile, the entertainment, watching Dad be on his computer. Yay! Come on, you can make it. You can go see what mommy's doing. See if you can get beg some food off of her, aren't you? Yeah, these uh, breakfast pot pies are nice because, um, you know, they just have breakfasty stuff in them. Like um, this particular one is deep, cheesy deep dish or something, and it's got potatoes in it, like little potato slivers and um, cheese and I forget what else. And then the other one I got for myself was some, uh, it was sausage um, with some kind of gravy in it. And so they only have a couple of choices, sadly. The breakfast burritos are actually better because at least you have more variety with those. But I was just trying to get as little as possible that day and still ended up coming home with a bunch of groceries. And There's some. the Kalika brat. What? And leaving some. And leaving some at the store. Yeah, that was a big stupid. Freaking paid for the stuff and left it at the store. And why is my phone going off? Let me see.
Notifications, notifications, notifications. A bazillion of them, as usual. It's 47. Well, the weather today, 47, mostly cloudy. Blah, 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 something or another. So, yeah, it's cold. It's winter, you know. For this meal, I thank you now as it sustains me. Please allow your blessings on these gifts and me as I will submit it be. Carmela! Meow! Meow! Cooling it down so I don't scald my mouth. Okay, I'm gonna have to ignore my phone today because it's going off again. So it's like, nope, I ain't doing it. <clears throat> Carmela. Pardon me while I'm eating. Oh, and this has got little ham chunks in it, too. I knew it had some other stuff. And this, this only took like five minutes to heat up. You can't get much quicker of a breakfast than that, you know. Plus, it gives me something to take my pills with, so I'm not taking them on an empty stomach. And Hello, baby. He knows mommy's got food. <laughs> you gotta wait till mommy done though, and then I'll let you lick the lick the um, little thing, okay? The little pan. I've also been doing this daily angel thing that I got the inspiration to do when uh, the last Yuli that me and Maria went to um, last summer or whatever, just this past summer, because I forget what month it was in or whatever, but um, we got these, um, uh, it's called Seven Angels. Seven Archangels Incense. But you only get like, I think it's like five uh, sticks uh, per for each day. And each day is a different angel. And the angel of today is um, 
Jaffiel, I think, or something like that. So when I ran out of those, I wrote down, because on, on the pack of each one, it has a little saying, a little prayer, or whatever you want to call it. And I wrote those down. I wrote down the angel of each day, and I've been lighting a candle every day for the angel of the day and a stick of incense of my own incense because I ran out of the other. And when I get my check on the 29th, then I'm going to get another batch of the seven archangels, you know, incense. So that's a, another way I've been trying to get myself through each day. With the guidance of the angel of the day. And tomorrow, I'm going up to see Carl. To help him with Christmas shopping because he don't like going by himself, and he's got some more food boxes he wants me to bring back because he's overstocked himself <laughs> with food boxes because he keeps going to these food pantries when he really don't need to because he's sitting on so many of them he's got to you know he's giving them away which is a good thing. But he just, he doesn't need to keep doing it, but he does. But hey, you know, it's free food. It's a savings. And I just, I mean, I've already gotten the okay from Maria to put it down at her place until we need it. So that... When our food stamps are done for the month and we get low on stuff, we have backup. And I just hope that the stores aren't going to be packed with people. <laughs> tomorrow because it being so close to Christmas now and today is Christmas for us you know as witches um, me and Carl already agreed that if we go into a store and there's a wall to wall people we're turning around walking right back out we're not we're not going to put ourselves through the craziness of <laughs> trying to shop there. Yeah. And I agree 100%. Um I don't I don't know how I would word that to him without him taking it wrong though. Yeah, I might try to find like a gentle way to say, you know, bro, it's great, you know, that you're doing this and we appreciate it very much. We really do. But maybe you should kind of, you know, stop doing it for a while and give some other people out there that might need it worse than us, you know, a chance to, to get it. Yeah. He doesn't realize he's basically taking food away from people who might need it even more than him. Yeah. So Steve and dad agree. So we're all three on agreement there. That, but that's Carl. He feels entitled and feels that the world and everyone in it owes him. Yeah. So I'll try. Will he listen or not? I 
I can only hope that he will, but, you know. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, we're all three in agreement there. I don't, I don't want to be, have it on my conscience that by accepting that food from him, I'm taking food out of children's mouths. That's, that's not right. And I, if situation was reversed and, you know, I was the person that he was taking it from. Yeah. And I had kids. I wouldn't be happy. Yeah, he should. Boo boo. Here. Come here. See if there's any you want you want. Go ahead. Um so yeah, I mean I'll I'll say something, try to say something to him tomorrow and you know, say something in a gentle enough way, because I don't want to come off like a bitch or anything, but you know, hopefully he'll listen and he'll realize, you know, that yeah, you're right. And it's like Carl, you know, we appreciate it, but you know, I don't, I don't want it on my conscience that, you know, I'm taking food out of children's mouths because you can't, you can't stop, <laughs> you know, because you just feel like you need to keep going and keep going and keep going and you don't need any more free food. You've got a shit ton already. <coughs> I mean, as it is, I've got. A bag of almonds over here that he got for me. I've barely touched. Got another full bag of almonds in the kitchen. And then another one that he's going to be giving me when I do go up tomorrow. And it's like, oh boy. I don't need that many bags of almonds, Carl. I mean, seriously. You need to stop. Yeah. And, you know, maybe put that into it too. Into the conversation. It's like, it's great when you really need it. But Carl, you don't, you don't need it anymore. You've got plenty. We're fine. We appreciate all, all the times you have given it to us, but we don't, you need to stop. You know, you need to think about the children that you're making go hungry because you just keep going and keep going and keep going and you don't need to. Um, because sadly, and he's even said this himself. Because he has gone so much and because he has so much, he he's a lot of stuff is going bad, you know, and that is wasting food. So it's like, what is the point of having all that food if a big chunk of it's being wasted because you can't eat it fast enough? You dumbass. Stop. Just stop. You know, for goodness sake. I mean, gosh. Yeah, it is. It's, it's worse, you know. And that's what he needs to think about. Because I've been over there, you know, many times to his place. He still doesn't have any furniture. If you, if you want to sit down, you have to sit down on the bed that he sleeps on every night. And he keeps the bedding and his pillow off the bed when he knows I'm coming up. Because he's so paranoid I'm going to bring bed bugs and roaches into his house. Yeah, other people could have used it exactly. So, um, he got his floor freezer. Don't know if he's even got it hooked up yet. He can't use his washer that he just bought uh, because something about some fittings were stripped or something or so um, to attach some hoses that he needs so that he can use it. But he can use his dryer, so that's a savings because then he only has to go to the laundromat and do his washing. Then bring him home and put him in his dryer. So that's saving him money, you know. And he, he got that suggestion from mom. And uh, he's like, you know, that's a good idea. So it's like that's still saving you money, Carl, because, you know, I mean, appreciate it. You know, it's because, the, you know, the thing that's probably the worst about going to laundromats is you never know when it's going to be overcrowded. Um, there could be times where you you may wait an unusual amount of, t of time 
just get a dryer or just get a washer because everybody and their mom is in there and they're taking up all the available washers and dryers already. And then, you know, you're sitting there trying to get your stuff done and there goes your whole day because you had other stuff you had to do. But, you know, laundry is one of them. And if you go away and do all your stuff and come back, there's no guarantee that it's not going to be exactly the way it was when you left. There's going to be a crap ton of people and who knows how long it might be before you can even get yours done. Um, and when he got that washer, dryer and floor freezer for himself, he spent over a thousand dollars. I was there. Yeah, must be nice. You know, having that kind of money because we don't, you know, and <laughs> he got his disability right away and it took fucking 11 years to give me money. Yeah. You I know, I've been getting like around 1500 a month if they had approved mine right away. Yep. And we're not saying that against Carl, but it just, he, Chris is right. It's wrong that. They did him the way they did, and they gave it to Carl right away. And Carl gets, I think it's been dropped down recently to like $1,300 a month or something like that now. But still, you know, that's $1,300 a month we could use right now to live on that Carl's getting that, you know, he's such a tightwad himself. He won't, he's no better than mom in that sense because he don't want to spend, he wants to spend as little money as possible he expects people to just walk in off the street and fix his trailer for him for little to nothing. And that's, that's not the way of the world. That's, that's not the way wor things work. And, you know, he, uh, he, we just had a, the, a power outage. Um, the thing was yesterday and, you know, it was out for like, I don't even know. It, it wasn't very long, but every second that it was out, I was worried about the fish dying um, even though Chris, he reassured me, he said, there should be still plenty of oxygen in the water, so they should be fine. Um, but I was still concerned, you know, uh, that, you know, it's like, well, I don't know how we didn't know how long the power was going to be off. And it was out, it was out from here all the way down to Hamilton. And that's, that's a pretty good distance. Even Kroger was on a backup generator yesterday. It was that bad. Um, so Chris wasn't able to get, you know, any shopping done or whatever. And he had to wait and do it a different day because they only had like a couple of registers open and, and it was just, there was, everybody was crowding to those registers because those were the only ones that were open. Um, so Carl was worried about, you know, freezing to death because his, his trailer is primarily run on electric. So he asked me to research, which I did. I even made a whole playlist just for that of, you know, how to survive when your power goes out and your your um, house or trailer is run strictly by electric. And I found some stuff. I put it in the playlist. I told him about it. And I told him that I would write down how I put it in the search engine, how, how I wrote it out and punched it in. And then it brought the stuff up so he can go look at whatever those of those he wants to look at himself. Um, he found out about the dispensary thing. One of them, he said, was an automated call. I forget what it said, um, but I think primarily it was talking about, you know, yeah, you can't just walk in off the street and buy stuff from the dispensary unless you have proof that you, you would qualify for medical marijuana and you have your card or whatever that says you can get medical marijuana. And um, so that was out. And then he called another one and they, the lady there said that it could be six to eight months before they'll even sell to the public. So, you know, he was, he was trying to get, you know, get information on that. He originally had asked me to look it up, but then he looked it up himself and he was able to find it without my help. And, you know, so stuff like that, you know, that, that I've done for him and that, you know, he worries about and it's understandable. So I, you know, me being who I am, I tried to help. Um, but at the same time, you know, his greed with, you know, the, the obsessive, you know, going in and getting food boxes that he don't need, you know, is, is not, it's, it's like, it's constantly throwing him balance. And he's sadly, he's just never going to see that, that, you know, I think it probably doesn't even occur to his brain right now that, you know, Carl, for every box that you get that you don't need, you know, even though you're you're giving a lot of it to us because you've got too much of it, 
you're taking food out of children's mouths, you know, and uh, you know, it's, it's bothering me. It's, it's, I don't want that on my conscience that I'm accepting a food box from you. I mean, I'm grateful for it, but it makes me feel bad because I'm taking food out of someone else's mouth that might need it worse than me. Um, but you know, with him, you got to word things a certain way, or he just blows it all out of proportion, makes them out and out of a molehill. And then he gets a, a freaking stick up his ass. And then he wants to be an asshole. So, you know, I'm, I'm not really... thrilled about going up tomorrow because I know I'm going to be bringing back, I think, at least two more food boxes. Um, now, he did say, you know, but not that this really makes it okay, you know, that he's still doing this um, <clears throat> because it don't. But he said, you know, whatever you do with it, once I give it to you, that's up to you. You know, if you want to, if you find somebody that, that needs it worse than you and you want to give it to them, go ahead. But in the same token, at least for Stephanie, because you remember Steph, he, um, he made a comment one time that, uh, talking about, you know, sending food box to mom and then finding out that they, you know, took what they needed from that particular food box. And I mean, this was a while back. And then they were going to take some of it and they were going to give it to Stephanie because she didn't have any or something or another. And, uh, and then he, he threw a hissy fit about it because he didn't want, and this was his words. Exactly. I don't want that bitch to have anything from me. Um, so, you know, that was pretty cold hearted of him. And, you know, because him and Steph, they just, they just never really got along, you know? And, um, for various reasons, but anyway, you know, for him to turn around and contradict himself like that on the one hand, say, you know, whatever you do with that food or whoever you decide to give it to, if it's something in there, you don't need. And there's somebody else out there on the street, literally starving that maybe has children, you know, and you want to give it to them. Great. Go right ahead. That's fine. You know? And, um, and yet turn around and say that about Stephanie, like whatever, Carl, you're just, <laughs> You're contradicting yourself, dude. Majorly. Let me go put this stuff in the kitchen, throw the pot pie thing away, put the spoon in the sink, and Pills taken before I forget them. <clears throat> I don't want mommy. She ain't got food now. Oh. Excuse me. It's only been a handful of minutes and my breakfast is already coming up and making me burp. Hey Janet, do this right or you're going to end up dumping your pills all over the floor.
garbage call. They never stop. And uh, when I do go to pay on my credit cards this time, because uh, Chris hasn't had any luck finding uh, a credit consolidator that we can afford, so I can't keep putting off, putting off, putting off. Smallest debt that I found that any of them work with is one that worked only around seven thousand dollars debt. You don't have seven thousand dollars debt. Um, <laughs> until I start making those payments again, the, the garbage calls are not going to stop. So there goes that idea out the window of being able to save the first of three installments back with this check of $149 so that hopefully sometime in February, provided Alicia would make the time, take the time and show up, I, I would uh, have the money saved to uh, give her and I, just her and I, a three-day vacation at Ravenwood Castle at one of the cabins so that we could do some kind of mother-daughter thing together. Um, and she said she'd like to get away. Um, and she said that she would go. And my original plan was January 9th, 10th, and 11th, because that's both of our birthdays. Granted, we would be checking out on her birthday, but we would, you know, we would have a continental breakfast together, you know, maybe, I mean, hang around for a handful of minutes or whatever before we headed on the road and started heading back, because most likely we're both going to go up in our own car. And, you know, knowing my daughter like I do, you know, she's going to want to get on the road and get headed back home as soon as possible. Um, but I can't save back $149 and 150 to pay on the credit cards. Now, credit one, I may need Chris's help with how to deal with them because I, cut, I closed those accounts out. And I'm going to make my payment, my $50 payment to them. But I don't want them trying to get $4 out of me again like they did every single time. And they would claim, you know, this is a one-time thing, yet they would do it every single time. So that's not a one-time thing where they would charge you $4 and then they would tell you once you made your payment how much credit you had available to you. They're not getting that $4 this time because I will flat out tell them. I'll be like, look, I'm willing to give you a $50 payment. That's it. No more $4, no more extra nothing. You either take this payment or the debt is considered paid in full and you'll be hearing from my lawyer because I'm, I'm not, I'm done with this shit. And you know, if they still give me trouble, I'll be like, hold on a minute. And then I'll hand the phone to Chris and I'll be like, you deal with these bastards light the fire under their asses because I'm about to blow a gasket because he knows how to deal with them you know, a little bit better than me and I would lose my shit and, I, and they would, they would, uh, they'd hang up on me because I would flip my bitch switch and I'd have a good reason to. Because there ain't going to be no credit available because I'm just getting the damn debt paid off. So they're not getting their $4 and whatever the hell that they charge me every single time. You know, when I had the fucking account open. Um, so, okay, that out of the way, <clears throat> did the cards, did the book, <sighs> gonna let my food settle a little bit and then, um, or, you know, maybe I'll just get the book and just, you know, do it. Do it now. Yeah, don't see that thing falling over on me. And it was. 
and it would have hurt really, really badly. I don't need any more injuries. So I'm sorry that I don't have a craft project to do today because I would like to do something, some kind of special something on, you know, today. All right, let's see. So I'm not sure what page. Excuse me. Hmm. Trying to find because I thought I had it marked. I'm going to have to go through here and find it again. You'll find Yule, the uh, Yule ritual in here. So this might take me a minute. Because <laughs> this book is so big. There's a lot of good ideas in here. Objects and tools. Which is pyramid. This is interesting. I, I never noticed this before. This would be interesting to read. The Witch's Pyramid, which, as you know, is to know, to dare, to will, to be silent. And here, and I outlined it, and I completely forgot this was even in the book. It gives you a definition of what each means. To know means that you will strive to learn as much as you can in this lifetime and that you will apply this knowledge to your daily life. It also means that you will seek truth in all things and be willing to change your perceptions to meet your awakening spirituality. Interesting. To dare says that you have pushed fear behind you and that you will be courageous and proactive in all that you do. You will believe in yourself and have faith in the universe and in your own abilities. To will means that you will learn to focus your thoughts and practice meditation and visualization in order to reach your goals. It means that you won't sit back and let the world pass you by. You will work toward your dreams. You will meet obstacles and find positive solutions to overcome them. To be silent is perhaps the most important. It means that you will keep your mouth shut about the magic that you do, lest your friends and others destroy the magic with their negativity before it ever manages to manifest. It also means that you will think before you speak and that you won't throw pearls before swine, which means don't give good information to bad people. Finally, it means that you will follow the etiquette, etiquette sorry, of the craft and not blab about what happened in Ritual Circle. If you work with a group, carry gossip about the other members, nor harm others intentionally through your words. For adults and teens, this is by far the most difficult promise to keep. Now that's cool. What? You going somewhere? Okay. So I did not even know that was here. Ooh, the Witch's Creed. I like it. Like I said, man, this book's got a lot of stuff in it. All right, Yule, where are you at? I know you're hiding somewhere. Um, Maybon. Lamas. 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 Midsummer. 
In bulk. Now we're getting closer. Yule, here we go. Okay. Huh. Okay. Um. He's going to get smokes. So, oh, did you say it be right back? Okay. Yule, Winter Solstice, page 78. Other names. Mean, G-E-I-M-H-R-I-D-H. Can't pronounce that. Alban Arthuane, A-R-T-H-U-A-N. Modra, Modran, Modranik, Mother Knight. M-O-D-R-A-N-I-C-H-T, which means Mother Night, date, so that you can celebrate Yule on either of these dates, the December 20th, 21st, or 22nd. I didn't know that. Depending upon the calendar, sun at one degree Capricorn. Meaning of the word Yule means wheel. Scandinavian derivation solstice means the sun stands still. Primary ritual focus, rebirth and renewal, saining or blessings in ritual form, burning of the Yule log. Now, see, that's the only thing. I never have a Yule log. I wish I did, but I don't, and I have no way to burn it. Um, age of holiday, wooden pillars throughout Europe aligned with the rising sun of the winter solstice have been recently dated to 3200 to 3000 B.C., New Grange in Ireland, Mays, Howe in Scotland, Stonehenge in the Dorset, Cursus in Britain, enabling us to currently calculate this holiday to be at least 5,000 years old. Popular mythos, Battle of Oak and Holly King, Oak King wins, Divine King, the Stag and the Wolf, Festival of the Dark God as seen in the German Bell Snickle. Astrological sign, one degree Capricorn, Earth, Cardinal, planetary ruler, Saturn. It was a custom of the pagans to celebrate on the same 25th of December, the birthday of the sun at which they kindled lights in token of festivity in these solemnities and revelries the Christians also took part. Accordingly, when the doctors of the church perceived that the Christians had a leaning to this festival, they took counsel and resolved that the true nativity should be solemnized on that day. Scripter Cyrus, 4th century AD. Thus, Christmas began, and the dark god of the pagans, represented by the first stranger to set foot in one's house bearing gifts, is the surrogate for Cernunus, Hearn the hunter, and Old Nick who grew into the character of Santana, Santa Claus, sorry, yet the celebration of winter solstice is far older than the 4th century. The word Yule is of Scandinavian origin, and the Yule log is the domestic counterpart of the communal Yule bonfire, normally made of oak, sometimes ash. The log was originally dedicated to the Teutonic god Thor, god of courage and fire, it was his job to dispel the cold and dark of the harsh northern winters and bring the warmth of the sun back to the people. The Yule log, therefore, was burned in sympathetic magic, hoping to inspire the god to share his blessings and bring back the sun. Decorated with ivy, ribbons, and evergreens, the log was then blessed with holy water, ale, or wine, the blood of the mother, to bring manifestation. The log was lit with a piece of last year's log to close the cycle of the season from Yule to the next. Never allowed to burn completely, pieces were saved as a charm against misfortune over the coming months. Now that's pretty good. Um, so, you know, I figured I would do, you know, kind of as my attempt to do something special on Yule today is reading the history and, and stuff of it because it was just small little snippets of, you know, this is where it originated. This is some of the other names it's known by, you know, and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> as I'm waiting for you, you know, to come back, because did you come back? Okay, if you're not back, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, 
<clears throat> you can see this later. But I know that I normally cast circle and I will say the words and everything, but I'm going to sit here to do it all before I, I do any of the invocations or anything like that because, you know, it's just because this book is so big, it's really hard to have somewhere to lay it and to be able to do everything, cast everything, and then say the words because right now I don't have my little table in front of me. It's over there. And I've been, you know, putting my foot rest out a lot more often so that, you know, Kalika has uh, more room to, you know, come up and lay down on my lap and, and stuff like that. And um, I hope that this gives you some comfort, Brooke. The, uh, the fire opal that you gave me, I now keep it on my protection, my protection circle amulet. And I, when I, when I did that, I ask the spirit of this protective amulet, protect my daughter, protect her children, protect her home, you know, protect her from any of these negative energies that come at her and, you know, people that hex her and, and just cause her all kinds of grief, you know, let this stop it. So I keep the fire opal on here with the protection circle. So I hope that gives you some additional comfort knowing that, you know, that I'm looking out for you and the boys and, and the kitties and any other little critter pets you got around there so that they're okay. And none, no harms com comes to any of you and you're, you're safe. You know, I got your back. I might be all the way down here in the States, but I got your back. You know, I take, I take care of my family every, every magical way that I can, because sometimes that's really like one of the few ways that I can take care of my family because I can't afford to travel or I'd already be there. Um, so let me go ahead and do my my castings. Um, may the powers of the one, the source of all creation, all pervasive, omnipotent, eternal. May the goddess, the lady of the moon, and the god horned hunter of the sun. May the powers of the spirits of the stones rulers of the elemental realms may the powers of the stars above and earth below bless this place and this time and us who are with you amen and blessed be um around me i cast the circle of stones not but love may enter within not but love may emerge from within charges by your powers old ones thrice the circles cast around evil sink into the ground thrice the circles cast around evil sink into the ground thrice the circles cast around evil sink into the ground Excuse me. Oh, great. Wonderful time to get the sneezies. Um, and when I say that thri uh, thrice the circles cast, I imagine the energy sinking harmlessly into from our place, if there is any negative down through, you know, and, and it don't hurt anybody on the way down. It goes down into the earth and the goddess turns it into, you know, something positive. Um, Okay, let's see. Um, circle expand to encompass this entire apartment so that I can move about freely within its boundaries without breaking them. Um, this circle is sealed. Okay. Earth, air, fire, water, elements of astral birth. I call you now, attend to me. In this circle, rightly cast say from psychic curse or blast, I call you now, attend to me. From cave and desert, sea and hill, by wand, blade, cup, and pentacle, I call you now, attend to me. This is my will and my request, so mote it be. Oh, there's my other jar. I've been looking for that. And this glue is like virtually useless right now. My other little jar that I'm going to probably have to start using to put beads in. Um, so Pops ran off to get his cigarettes, of course. Can't function without the stupid things. And I wish every time he lit one up, they would deathly sicken him. So 
and disgust him so much that he would just put it right back out again. That ain't gonna happen. All right, now where I keep these allergy pills handy because he's forever seems coming and asking me for one because his sinuses um barely not really but it works enough so i can have somewhere to kind of set my drink and hopefully not knock it in the floor all right <clears throat> So bear with me, people. I'm just doing things a little differently today because this book, book is just too big and heavy to do it any other way. Yule Invocation. Morning light will flood the chamber. Winter solstice sun. Energy unfolding. Saturn's rule has just begun. Crystals formed of ice and frost. Freeze field and forest green. While mighty oak and holly fight for favors from our queen. The great wheel brings conception, birth, and death as days of yore. Each bonfire on a ley line honors what has gone before. Seven planets, seven spheres, seven gates swing open. I lift my arms and call the charge, the incantation spoken. I conjure water spirits, pour forth the sacred winds, come hither, O oh great fire. The magic now begins, solar vapors, starry heavens, clouds and earth and waves, unite in your perfection on this shortest solstice day. I hold the key of secrets and the phantoms will avail. The crossroads shimmer open as the rod connects to grail. Seven planets, seven spheres, seven gates swing open. I lift my arms and call the charge, the incantation spoken. Bare boned yule logs burning, each spark a blessing brings. Red and green, the sacred blood of past and future kings. Mistletoe and bayberry, winter's leaves and resin. Spice and myrrh and evergreen connect the earth to heaven. Through scented smoke and sacred prayer, I manifest goodwill. Bring peace and joy to hearth and home and every wish fulfill. Seven planets, seven spheres, seven gates swing open. I lift my arms and call the charge, the incantation spoken. And that gave me cold chills. Uh, the saying that part, the seven planets, seven spheres, seven gates swing open. I lift my arms and call the charge, the incantation spoken. Woo! Okie dokie. Um, welcome the power of Yule. Let this day be full of blessings and joy and, and happiness and shit tons of money for all of us. Um, magical ideas for your ritual Sabbath. Your Sabbath, Yule, Yule Sabbath ritual. So this is some crafty stuff that even though I myself cannot do, maybe some of you out there can. And if you do, let me know. And just a thank you would be great. Uh, especially if you have, you know, when you have some good success with it. Make your own Yule log. If you don't have a fireplace, you can carve holes in a log and insert metal tea, metal tea candle cups, candle lights. That was quick. Decorate with evergreens, ribbons, and ivy. Empower mistletoe for healing and prosperity. Make puppets or statues to represent the oak and holly kings. <coughs> Place them on the altar or put on a skit for younger members of your household. Research the history of St. Nick when Santa was a shaman by Joseph Cusimano is a good start. And the Christmas slash Yule tree. Empower Yule and Christmas cards with loving energy. Empower Yule tree ornaments for prosperity. 
Empower all gifts you give this season with love and happiness. Build a Yule altar to honor the spirits of the wolf and the stag. Find out what the bell snickel is and how he fits into the magical German Yule. Recognize that Yule is a time of closure, especially in relation to solar-driven activities in your life, groups, and organizations, major work projects, corporations, etc. Gracefully let go of those things that are no longer needed. Add meditation and prayer tuned to the lowest ebb of solar energies to your daily activities over this period. <laughs> Begin or keep family traditions associated to the season. Yule occurs at the transition of Sagittarius to Capricorn from a mutable fire sign to an earthy cardinal one. Capricorn ruled by Saturn gives us the authority, strength, and business acumen to make wise decisions about our future. Blessed be. So there's our Yule in a nutshell. Um, so I'm going to take one of my very first business cards that somebody made for me. And that person turned out to be a user backstabber and it's been after my daughter since she was 15. So, yeah, I'm, he's not on my favorite person's list anymore. And the last time he called me was, I think, a couple years ago on Halloween and it was right at midnight. But then he was drunk off his ass, too, when he called. So, <clears throat> so if you do any of these Yule things, just think of me fondly when you do and smile and say thank you, Janet, for the ideas. Um, and let me know that you used them, and that, that'll mean a lot. Uh, because right now, I just I don't have the space. I don't have the materials. Um, I, like I said, I mean, the most that I would have been able to do was do some of my resin, my resin bits, but my resin pieces, but uh, I can't do that because I have nowhere to put them. Uh, and I've got too many already that I still haven't sold, uh, of course. That's a lot of them are still in the trunk of our car and have been since last summer. Because I keep forgetting to take them out, put them uh, back downstairs in the basement, or put them in Maria's closet in the front room until I can find a successful way to hopefully sell them. And um, the only thing I can think of at this point, as much as I hate to say it, um, because it's it it too is is going to be risky, but I don't know what else to do. Considering a lot of these people, if they did start buying my stuff, you know, it, it's going to be easier and more convenient for them to be able to do it online. Which means the money's going to have to be put on my PayPal, which is tied to my Janet Feinstein at Yahoo.com. And um, I would so once the money was on the PayPal and I got them their stuff, you know, got it mailed to them then I would have to take the money off my PayPal, transfer it to one of my other cards, you know, that hopefully SSI wouldn't be able to trace or find out that I even had it so that, you know, they don't end up yanking that money off my check or using it against me in some way. And some of the additional ideas that I've come up with, but haven't had a chance to um, do yet because it would take a large surface area to pull it off. And again, I, I don't have the room. I don't have the resources. I'm trying to do all this stuff from this tiny little apartment that just don't allow me to do so. But because I have so much, so many of the cloud coasters, the big ones and the small ones, Instead of selling them as at least maybe some of them sell as a set of coasters or something. Um, 
which I still would might do, but take and just start gluing them together and make like a big altar piece or something that maybe you could place on your altar if you are so inclined and you have the space to do so. Or do, you know, do a, do a smaller platform with the smaller coasters. Um, <clears throat> the ones that, you know, because I've got so many of them, I could probably do a couple set of coasters and do these bigger pieces, glue them all together. But I would want it to be a glue that is going to hold that. So I would have to experiment and glue it and see how well it holds myself before I would consider selling them because I don't want to sell them to somebody and then they fall apart. And then that person, you know, I'm, I'm selling a shoddy product and that person's never going to buy from me again. And I'm going to feel about this high, you know, and I'm, and it's going to discourage me and make me think that, you know, I'm not, I can't even do that. Right. So why even continue to keep trying? <clears throat> um, but since I haven't been able to sell them the way they are, maybe if I turned them into something else, they would sell better by turning them into these bigger pieces and just gluing them together in a certain way um, to create, like I said, basically a platform that maybe, you know, say you didn't have a platform and you wanted to go out to the woods somewhere and you wanted to have something to set stuff on, then you could use one of these bigger pieces to do that. <clears throat> you could set offering bowls, you could do incense, but I would caution if you're going to do incense, make sure it's in an incense holder because if you put like candles and stuff on that, it wouldn't be a big deal for the wax to drip down on the piece. But if you add like, if you do like a tea light or something, it, it, it's going to di disfigure the platform because it's going to melt the, uh, the, um, the, the resin because when those tea lights burn down to where they're like almost virtually completely liquid or they're about to burn out that that whole thing gets hot because it's tin but it gets hot you know so it would end up melting the and disfiguring the platform so i would caution people about if you're going to burn candles on it make sure they're in candle holders make sure it's not going to get so hot that it's going to burn your your piece and and mess it up because, you know, don't don't put that on me because that's not my fault because I'm cautioning you now. Be careful how you do that. But for like setting up altar bowl, little tiny altar offering bowls or something like that, then, yeah, that should be fine. Um, and, you know, as far as the misshapen, you know, jewelry boxes, use them as an offering dish. And when I, you know, I've got to look in my box and I'm hoping that my other um, perfectly round uh, um, jewelry box mold is still in there because if it's somewhere in this living room, it's probably already been destroyed, which means I'm going to have to get another one so that I can have that perfect round shape um, whenever I do do some of those castings again. But right now, you know, trying to use the only two tables I have to work any projects on, I'm using for diamond paintings. So I can't use them for diamond paintings and for resin pieces. It just ain't going to work. There's no room. And so have a lot of ideas. It's just acting them out and, and making them happen is going to be the challenge, you know. Um. For anybody that comes and, and stops by for Magical Crafting, you know, thank you. Blessed be. Happy Yule. Um, if any of you join my channel and hit the I bell icon and give me a like and, you know, maybe put a positive comment down there or something and let me know if you like, you know, some of my comment comment or content. But, you know, I will say that, you know, as much as I try to put my own witchy flair on my lives a lot of times it's just me vlogging and talking about you know my life experiences which i don't know there's going to be some witches out there that maybe that's just going to be boring to them because they want to be entertained and you know i understand that but you know i'm not i'm not always trying to entertain i'm just trying to do my own thing you know and only you know Having 17 followers as much as I'm grateful for every one of them, you know, there's just 
I don't see me ever reaching even anywhere near the goal of a thousand plus members. Um, because I, you know, I don't go to exciting places and, you know, I don't haunt, I don't investigate rather haunted places or, you know, go do a, a nice, uh, extensive, you know, fancy smancy, you know, witchy ritual somewhere at some sacred location. And, you know, I just, I just don't have the, the resources to do that. I don't have the money and <clears throat> it, I just don't see that ever happening. So I'm never going to, you know, be able to get any monetary donations on here. Um, but I don't let that stop me, you know, from still doing my, doing my live streams, you know, so I know that this is not going to be for everybody. And for those that do come on and decide this is boring and it's not worth watching, then, you know, I apologize for that, but thanks for coming by and at least taking a look anyway, you know? Um, but all I ask is if you can't say anything positive, then please don't say anything at all because <clears throat> I don't need a bunch of trolls coming onto my channel and cutting me down and talking badly about me um, because it can happen. And it, it's happened to countless other YouTubers, you know, because a lot of people out there might say, well, why do I want to look at her disgusting, you know, living room that, you know, she, you know, cause I don't have like a crap ton of dollars and I'm not living in New York city or California or Las Vegas somewhere. And I'm, shit and hundred dollar bills that I can have these elaborate extravagant, you know, things that I do on my lives because I'm just, that's not me. And the money just isn't there to do that. Um, if you want to get to know me as a person, this is a good place to do that. If you want to get to know me as a witch, this is also a decent place to do that because I do try to do, you know, the daily spells, and I do try to do the daily witch thing and the daily um, affirmations for anybody that shows up. Um, and uh, the, the daily green oracle, you know, if they want me to do a card for them, just say so, and I'll do a card for them. I'll say their name, I'll do the card, and tell them what the message is, you know. And I'm not asking any money for that, because to me, it just, it just wouldn't be right. And I don't want to do something that's YouTube is going to have a snit fit about and then kick me off or, you know, cancel my channel or something because I'm doing something inappropriate to their guidelines or breaking their rules or something. Um, And right now, you know, I'm just sitting here trying to think of, you know, anything else that I can, you know, maybe do to. Special, you know, for Yule, but I can't, I just can't think of anything. And I don't know if I even really, you know, have much, much else to talk about. Um, hey. uh, she hasn't talked in a while, so I don't know if she's on or not. When do we get to see our grandkids? Um, well, probably about the most that Brooke would be able to do is send us pictures of them, but far as actually physically seeing them and you know easier said than done I you want know. to cook something with Hayden and Oakley if he wants to yeah that'd be fun <laughs> you know for them to be able to cook some stuff with grandpa while we're, while we're doing a live that'd be a lot of fun even though you know we can't see you guys or anything um uh, you guys could at least see him. You could see us and hear us and everything. And anytime, you know, you feel it's safe enough and because of what things are discussed and you want to let the boys watch the live with you, then that's fine, too. It's up to you. You're the mom. You know, I'm not asking you to do something for me that you don't want to do. 
So I'm um, right now. I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out if I want to just go ahead and end this live because I don't want to just sit here and the rest of it be boring because I don't know what else to do or I don't know what else to say or talk about or you know don't have any additional special way to celebrate it I know what would definitely make my day now that you've made my day coming on what would be a nice addition to making my day would be if Alicia would call and come by and spend the day with me. Because it is Yule. And I, I don't even know if, if she's seen even one of my live streams because she's never said and she may not have internet herself or may not have the ability to you know because she's just so busy all the time why should I think that she's going to have time to sit and watch a live stream <laughs> you know and stay on with me as as long as I'm on and spend time with me that way which in all the, all the lives I've done not once have I seen her ever pop on here and that hurts it really does but you know I know they're grown you know they have their own lives and I guess it's always going to be my eternal wish that they would make more time for me and make more of an effort more often to at least call once in a while and just talk to me for a few minutes, you know, if that's all they've got or set up a day that, you know, they would be willing to come and spend with me. And, you know, they could even pick the activities that we did if they wanted, you know, and if it's something that requires money, my only um, <clears throat> request there would be that they would have to do it during a payday for me because that's the only way I would have my own money to be able to spend because I wouldn't want them to feel like I expect them to spend money on me. I would rather have my own. If they want to spend money on me and get me something great, I would greatly appreciate it. It'll mean a lot to me, but I don't want them to feel like I expect it, you know, expect them to buy me anything. I would just, what would mean more the most to me is, is just having that time with them. So, Amalthea, help me have a good day today, and if you would bless me with a big money windfall, that would be great, because I need it, so that I could, you know, maybe go out to Michael's and get me some... <clears throat> inexpensive little, you know, fun, easy projects that I could do and, you know, people could maybe do along with me if they could go out and get the stuff themselves or get something similar and just do a project with me, even if it's completely different than the one I'm doing myself. The fact that they would be doing it with me and doing it during a live stream, I wouldn't have to see them doing the project as long as they'd say, hey, I'm doing a project too, so I'm actually, we're doing something together, that would that would be great. Uh, but I feel like if, you know, if I stay on, that I'm, I'm just gonna, I want to stay on, but I don't want to start gravitating, gravitating towards the negative, you know, and getting um, sad and crying over things, you know, and ruining Yule for not only myself, but others that might be watching. 
so I, I don't want to do that. So um, I, I don't know if I should stay on or if I should just call it a day and end the live. Because I don't, I don't have anything fun and exciting to say or do. Or. I think I am. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna end the live and say I love you. Blessed be. Love you. Uh, thanks for coming and hanging out. Happy Yule. I uh, hope you find some fun, special things to do today, and I will see you um, next live whenever I decide to do one, and I'll try not to make it too long. So, bye for now. Hugs and huggle kisses and all that. <laughs>